The gentleman from Massachusetts reserves. The gentlewoman from uh, Minnesota is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the representative from Massachusetts for yielding me the customary 30 minutes, and I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Today, we are here to discuss H.R. 3648, the Equal Access to Green Cards for Legal Employment, or the EGLE Act, and H.R. 7946, the Veteran Services Recognition Act. The EGLE Act would do away with country caps and certain, for certain employment-based green cards. Unfortunately, the bill we are debating today changes a carefully negotiated and agreed upon bill from last Congress, favoring a Democrat go-it-alone approach that unfortunately we've seen all too often in this body over the last two years. One of the most shocking changes is the exclusion of critical language to prevent those associated with the Chinese Communist Party or the Chinese Armed Forces from admission to these immigration programs. When this came through the Judiciary Committee, Congressman Bishop, uh, Bishop offered an amendment to add language that once again clarified that CCP members are ineligible to participate in these programs. That amendment failed on, part, on a party line vote. We all know the CCP is not a good faith actor, and I am appalled that the majority would re risk our national security by rejecting that amendment. H.R. 7946, the Veterans Service Recognition Act, aims to establish a program within the DHS for non-citizens to receive citizenship through service in the military. Based on the title, it sounds like a good bill. Of course, those who served honorably in the armed forces should be honored for their valor and sacrifice. But despite the title, this bill did not even go through the Veterans Affairs Committee. Why? because it is just one more example of the Democrats exploiting a sympathetic population to push their open border policies, and they should be ashamed. I will also point out that there are already procedures in place by which non-citizen service members can be rewarded for their sacrifices for this country. The Immigration and Nationality Act established special avenues to naturalize members or veterans in the U.S. military. These procedures have been in place since 2002. Under the current INA, it rightfully does not offer this opportunity to those who are dishonorably discharged or those who have committed a serious crime. But the bill we are discussing today, either through poor drafting or purposeful vagueness, does offer a, a citizenship to those people. In the Judiciary Committee, several amendments were offered to ensure dangerous criminals did not receive an adjustment of immigration status. Amendments that included crimes like illicit trafficking, trafficking in firearms, human trafficking, and each amendment failed. Why are my colleagues across the aisle so eager to have criminals on the streets of our communities? This bill doesn't even apply to just veterans. It would expand protections for non-citizen families, members, family members of veterans who would otherwise be deported for committing crimes. Drug smugglers, human traffickers, and domestic abusers who never even served in our armed forces would be allowed to avoid deportation because of this bill. I am also concerned that this bill re relies heavily on the interpretation of the Secretary of Homeland Security. As it is written, DHS does not have to deport nearly anyone. Leaving it to the DHS secretary to exercise discretion in almost all cases. Secretary Mayorkas has done nothing to ease the immigration crisis in this country. Do we really want to give someone like that more responsibility? I am skeptical that an individual who can't even admit that the border is not secure will treat this increased discretion in a manner that is required to keep our communities safe. Before I reserve, I will note that the rule before us provides no Republican amendments in order, continuing a trend by this majority of stifling debate and suppressing the minority party's opportunity to offer changes or ideas to improve the underlying bills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and it is for that reason I oppose the rule and I ask members to do the same and I reserve. 